He's like, all right, Fran. I think Tim Burton's made me brave. I just want to get up, I want to go to work, do the job and come home. And I'd always wanted to work in film and I didn't know how I was going to do it. Every single job is different. Oh, no, this isn't a dance. This, Oh my, what is this? And that was the most amazing feeling. And nobody can ever observe that. Mum, mum, look, Jesus, he's escaped. Because it is all about the work. You've listened to Jad's, Jad's episode already of this one. Yes. So I have a question that I've sort of continued. Um, and that question is, if you were to look at your life and career as a story with a normal structure of a beginning, middle and end, yeah. where would you feel you are at the moment? <sighs> that's harsh. Yeah. That's, that's a harsh question. Um, hopefully, I'm just about to embark on another, a new chapter. Okay. So I would say uh, end is a terrible terrible yeah word to use especially somebody who is slightly older than other people you might interview right and because there should never be an end no there should never be an end um but i've had a lot of chapters mm. doesn't I mean you're, definitely doesn't mean you're at the end i definitely have no and I, there's still yeah there's still, still a lot more to go yeah yeah, yeah yeah definitely definitely and I'll, i don't want to go on about topsy turvy again but interestingly after i uh, worked on Topsy Turvy they carried on filming my, my bit had finished and I went back to see them and I was sitting in this beautiful garden talking to Gary Yershon who was the musical director and he writes music too and I said to him do you know what Gary this has been so extraordinary that if I never work again I know I'll be, o- I'll be okay mm. and he said yeah I feel the same and I've never that feeling has never left me because I've genuinely I meant it at the time and I still mean it now. Mm. And so everything else since then <laughs> has been a bonus. It's been a bonus. Every yeah. job I get yeah. is a bonus. That's a really wonderful feeling, I think. Yeah. 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 How lucky. Yeah. How lucky is that mm. to recognise it as well? I think people don't always... Yeah. They're so understandably worried about the next job or paying mm. their bills or, or whatever that actually they don't stop and actually yeah. realise about where, where they, they are. are. Yeah, because yeah. I think where you are is important. I mean, we always ask that question, and so far we've had a lot. So Jad's answer was obviously he's at the end of his beginning. That's is I where he feels he's at. He's at the end of his introduction. Yeah, I know. I really like that because I, that was great. What a great thing that, uh, as well to sort of describe how you feel in the moment. Mm. Yeah. Recognizing actually, I've done some brilliant things. Is what I sort of try to highlight to Jad a lot of the time. Is that you actually have done some cool things. Yeah. And enjoy doing that. Yes, there is an element of sort of let's let's find the next thing and keep going, but. It's nice to hear that actually, no, no, I've done something. This is actually really cool. which is really good because there's so many fans mm. of your work. I mean, it's out of you out there who, who who love things that you've been part of and things you've done, and actually for you to love it is important yeah. too. I think. I yeah, I yeah. agree. And I guess e- even then, I was already 39 when I made that mm. film, so I had already had a dance career. It was shortened because I had a back accident. Um, I choreographed my own dance group. I worked in sort of commercial mm. stuff so I had already done quite a lot yeah, yeah. um you know before, before that I, beginning before that, happens, yeah and I always chapter. wanted to work in film and I didn't know how I was gonna yeah do it. you know I used to sit on my bed and go oh my god how did they do that how did they <laughs> yeah, yeah. um which is what's so great about this I think because it is it's a mystery it's a brick wall and it's a mystery mm. when you're on the outside of it it's a gated yeah. community. Certainly in my job, anyway. Yeah. You know, it's pro- probably varies from job to job. but Yeah, it always does kind of, yeah, that was a lot of our thinking into this. Because whenever I'd ask anybody who is more, you know, who had a career and I asked them how they started, it was always the most random answer. Like I always get yeah. kind of really, like one guy I spoke to who's a writer who's a lot older um, than myself, he said he worked in a, I think he graduated uni and then he worked in an agency that received scripts um, okay. And they told yeah. him specifically, if you want to move up, you're never going to move up. You're just here to basically, he would kind of filter through all the scripts. And then the ones where they were, he thought they had some promise, he would then give to the real person who's going to actually read through the scripts. Wow. And there was one day where that, that person was unwell and they were like, can you just do it? And then now he's a really accomplished uh, TV brilliant. writer. Yeah. So I think it's really interesting to listen to kind of those different journeys because it is just random sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and... Uh, again, I was working at the London Bubble, mm. not with Andy Circus. It was another season. And I was standing at the bar talking to this woman who's an agent, an actor's mm. agent. And I said to her, I said, oh, would you take a choreographer on? 
And she said, no, I wouldn't know what to do with you. And I thought, oh, <laughs> you know, because I just couldn't get an agent. I woke up the next morning. This is something I probably wouldn't do today, let alone back then. And I thought, I'm going to call her up. Mm. So I called her up and I said, look, I know you said no, but I'm just asking you again. She was so shocked that I would called her mm. that she said, come in, let's have a chat. So I went in, had a chat and I said, look, I'm not expecting you to procure work for me because I know how it goes. I can tell you how much I get paid. You know, rep is rep. There are sort mm. of set fees because they don't have a lot of money. Yeah. I'll tell you. I just don't want to deal with producers. So she did. She took me on. A few weeks later, I got a phone call and she said, um, she said, oh, she said, I've got you an interview with Mike Lee. I said, what? Wow. <laughs> and what had happened was she got actors up for it. Mm. And she happened to say to one of the producers, I don't suppose you're looking for a choreographer, are you? I've just taken someone on. And they went, oh, yeah, we're looking now. Yeah. Fax your CV. That's how long ago it was. So <laughs> she faxed her CV and I got an interview. I think That's amazing. It, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's that thing of if you can just keep moving forward somehow. Mm. Even when you feel like you're in a rut, even when you feel like you can't do anything, if you can just keep doing something. Yeah. I think. That's brilliant to hear. Yeah, I think that's what we we sort of yeah. noticed the pattern with that. The people saying, you know, just kind of getting over that level of anxiety about producing something or just talking yeah. to people and yeah. things. Yeah. I think so most people stop. It's most people yeah. try something-ish when yeah. they make something or they try something yeah. or they tr try to try to make something and then they hit a hurdle and they don't know where to go. And then that's the end of their story. And yes. that seems to be quite a common theme I hear. I made a film when I was younger, then I sort of quit that and went to work in an office, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. So yeah. it's nice to hear your story. It sounds realistic mm. and it sounds not common, but common in that it is random, but you sort of did it yourself. It's not so much if I finished qualification X and that made I could just walk into this role mm. here like a, like a graduate program would. No, that's right. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. And when I went for the interview, I was really nervous because I thought, oh, he's going to ask me what I'm doing and I don't mm. have any work. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you know, should I should I make something up before I go in? And interestingly, he was looking for someone who had nothing in the diary. How come? Yeah. Because of the way he works. OK. It, it's not like, you know, you could you could get a theatre job, say, like in rep and they go, OK, over a four week rehearsal period, we can afford to pay you for 10 days. So come in two or three days a week. Mm. OK. He needed somebody every single day and to commit like everybody does commit on, on those films. Mm. Um, and so the last thing he actually wanted was for me to have other work. He wanted just all your yeah. time? Yeah. Is yeah. that normal in film compared uh, to Actually, to it theater? is. It is. Yeah. It is pretty normal in film. Yeah. Um, if you're on a project long term. Yeah. You, uh, sometimes I might just go in and do, you know, a couple of dances like The Duchess. So you know that you're going to have a few rehearsal days yeah. and a few filming days. But working with someone like Tim Burton, mm. normally uh, I'm in all the time. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to think. So if we if we just circle back a little bit. So you yeah. you started off as a dancer. I did. And then so that, that was brought, unfortunately, to a close due to an injury. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. So was that quite an obvious step for you into choreography? Well, what happened was I was already choreographing. So I trained at a classical based school. But we... It, it wasn't a degree course. You didn't have to have a degree back then, so it was vocational. Mm. So we literally danced from nine o'clock in the morning till sometimes <laughs> eight, nine at night. It's probably why you hurt your back. We did, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we did classical ballet, we did mathematics, jazz, tap, national dance, Spanish. Um, so many different styles that, and I didn't realise at the time what an extraordinary training that was for a choreographer mm. because it gave me a really wide skill set mm. and that was before youtube so you had to know stuff you know if yeah. so, somebody phoned me up one day and said oh uh can you do a mazurka and i went oh yeah give me 20 minutes and and it was just i play the music oh yeah the steps that we mm. learn yeah and they they always want somebody the next day and that's happened to me quite a few times um and so those i wouldn't want to do a documentary on all that but it's those styles are kind of in me yeah and I, it was only as I sort of progressed as a choreographer that I realised how valuable that training was. Um, but anyway, so when I left uh, Bush Davis, which is where I trained, four of us set up a dance group because we didn't want to do classical ballet. We didn't, we weren't really sure what we wanted to do. And 
somebody, one of the teachers suggested that we did that. So we did that. I choreographed it because nobody else would. It was that <laughs> simple, yeah. really. And we worked quite a bit in this country and then we traveled abroad and then we came back and then uh, we kind of all went and did our own thing. And I started doing whatever I could. I did like fashion shows, cabarets, all sorts of things um, until I met somebody who gave me a job at the Liverpool Everyman. Mm. Um, it was a director called Pete Rowe, who I've worked with for many, many years. In was, that, was that like a meeting by chance or just like a... It, it was, <laughs> again, okay. <laughs> so we knew some people at Granada mm. and it was their birthday and they they used to have a club at Granada and they had like a little stage. So we did a show, the four of us, we did a show for them. And her husband happened to be the musical director of this show at the Liverpool Everyman. And he recommended me to Pete. Nice. And I, I met him, uh, yeah, and that's been an incredible collaboration. So that was definitely a huge chapter. Mm. So the mm. dan- there were the dancing years and the group, and then the next chapter in rep, mm. where and I rep worked. is you said uh, repertory theatre. Repertory theatre. So okay. it's, it's places that are subsidised, basically. And they're br- it's brilliant because you don't have to cast famous people. You yeah, have, yeah, you know, you cast who you want to cast. People who are actually right for the job. Jad talks about Star Wars casts unknown actors. They tend or to little yeah. known actors, should we say, compared to yeah. what what we normally. Often it doesn't get green lit unless they've got yeah. names attached to it. Okay, yeah. So that green makes lit sense. means basically means yes, it, we'll give you the money to yeah. make it. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think smaller parts. I think maybe they are more open, especially with self tapes. Mm. Yeah. People you know, do send self-tapes in through via casting directors. Yeah. Again, it depends on your agent. Yeah, which is a whole other, other Agents really come into play, I think, with yeah. actors. What is the relationship of the like, choreographer like with, say, like the writer? Just because I'm a writer, so I'd be interested to know about what that relationship was like in terms of, is it like a direct, would you look at the action in the script and then translate that into choreography or would you go, literally speak to the writer or the director or how does that work? No, I'll translate from the script. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, you know, the writer and the director and the writer and the producers, it's kind of such a almost private thing, yeah. isn't it, mm, yeah, really, yeah. that I'm not normally brought in until mm. that's all been signed off. Okay. Even if it's not sort of completely and there'll be rewrites and stuff. Yeah. But normally by the time they, they bring someone like me in, they know what it is that they need me to do. Cool, okay. How much direction do they give you or how much freedom would they give you? Um... Or does that vary completely? It varies. I would say generally quite a lot. Yeah. Mm. I mean, with so say something like Topsy Turvy, that was very specific. We knew exactly what we were doing. We were trying to recreate the movement from 1885. And something like the Duchess, that's very period. But a lot of the work with Tim Burton, actually, he will give me a lot of freedom. And I will come up with something in the rehearsal room, mm. and then he will come and mm. watch it because that's what he likes to do. He yeah. likes to see it, you know, and then talk about it afterwards, yeah. which I can completely understand. Of course. Um, and I, I think Tim Burton's made me brave, actually. Mm. That's nice. Yeah. Like he puts, it's quite a big compliment to give someone. Yeah. He, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So he puts trust in basically the yes. department. Yeah. That's yeah, really he nice. Does. He does. And and so does Mike Lee. Mike, yeah. Mike Lee, yeah, loves the people that he works with. And I think most of the directors I've worked with actually yeah. have have huge respect for what makes everybody uh, around them. If you have an aspiring director who wants to work with a choreographer or a movement director, mm. um, what what makes that relationship good from your end? Well, communication. Okay. Yeah, commu- it's really interesting because these workshops that uh, I do with my assistant Dale. Um, they're not just choreographers. Porto Film Festival, they bring people from all over the world and it's directors, DOPs, producers, sometimes writers. So it's all, it's people from different departments and they're brilliant because all these questions we really kind of hammer out. Mm -hmm. And the very first exercise we do is we get a director and a choreographer, sometimes director and a producer, interview. So, because that's the, that's something that I can never take anybody in. Nobody can ever observe that. Mm. You know, they might be able to come on set and observe me. They might be able to come to the rehearsal room. But I'm never going to take anybody into a, a meeting or an interview situation. Yeah. So, and that is the most fascinating part of the whole weekend for me. Yeah. 
watching and and you know what the directors are always terrified really they're always terrified yeah and it's because they often come to the workshop because they've got a project mm. they've got a project where they know they need to work with a movement person mm. and maybe they've never done it before so they're coming to learn which is brilliant mm. and some are brilliant at explaining their project and what they need the movement person to do and others are not at all interesting yeah, yeah. and we always say you know the more you can give us the mm. more we can give you back yeah yeah because mm. i can only imagine if they give it quite vague they yeah. probably have a very specific idea in their head yeah which they maybe can't articulate or don't know how to articulate that's right that i mean i i always say and we're talking about projects often the projects they come are quite abstract okay. they're, they're yeah. already abstract it's not like oh i want to do a 1960s dance you know that's, mm, that's yeah. kind of easy to talk about um but when it's more abstract and they want maybe some kind of weird character movement that's great just just tell us as much as you can yeah, and yeah. i think you know for me if that sort of if i can't get enough information in an interview situation i would always say why don't we just get into a room i'll bring some bodies in and we'll mm. just try things out yeah yeah choreographer and a movement yeah. director what's yeah. the difference between the two okay a choreographer actually i think is probably easier to explain yeah it, it's really dance steps yeah so you know it might be 64 dancers tap dancing uh it could be yeah people in a 60s nightclub dancing um i think movement direction is more opaque i think it's, it's harder to describe there's a crossover between choreography and movement direction mm. um and movement directors uh, especially who work, I guess, in the theatre, will always say that they're the ones that are responsible for um, the look, the style of the piece. Uh, for me, I think I see myself more as a choreographer. Okay. Um, the movement direction stuff I've done is quite specific, like Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. So he wanted the uh, kids to... He said that it's not about having special powers. It's It needs to be about their humanity. Mm -hmm. So it was finding ways of very subtly, like the little girl who's really strong, how, how could she pull out an oversized carrot? You know, how was that going to look? Really kind mm. of it's the minutiae of movement sometimes. I, I actually observe that in films. Sometimes I go like, ah, oh, like, well, I'll observe, say it's like super strength, something that comes out awesome, yeah. trying to try and be strong and make something look heavy. Yeah. Would yes. that be yes, something yes. you would do? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And one of the other uh, characters was she uh, was made of air. Mm. So unless she had her lead boots on, she would just float. Well, of course, you can't ask an actor to wear <laughs> just lead float. <laughs> to, well, A, to float. Yeah, you're right. Um, or wear lead boots. All of course, day. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, the boots were not made of lead. Yeah. But, um, so not. we, I had to we worked on her sort of generic walk what that would mm. look like yeah. and how it felt when those boots came off and how even even when she was on a wire uh, which of course is then taken away in post and you yeah. don't see it but but you can't just go up imagining that um you're just being lifted by wire you have mm. to imagine what it must be like to float that's your habitat that's where you know your character wants to be she wants to be floating, so we yeah. have to see that yeah. somehow. How how do you do this? So, because obviously you've never floated before, I'm no. assuming. No. Um, how mm. do you know what? Like, how, so you've got you've got this job. Let's say it was the first job you had, where you've got to teach someone to fly or float or mm. something that is not a normal movement, should we say? How do you teach that, knowing you've never done that yourself? Well, I think sometimes with the movement side, the kind of the movement direction side, rather than trying to work out exactly what the body is doing. You know, sometimes that can be useful, but often it's what's inside somebody's head. Mm. Okay. Especially with actors. You know, if you say something to an actor, like I did with her, you know, I just said, look, when you float up, you you just have to imagine, not just that you're floating, but you're happy. Mm. This is what this is when you're at your happiest, mm. and just that will give the appearance of lightness. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really interesting. That is really interesting. There's, there's only one thing I always notice um, a specific movement on, um, and it's on. It's it's in um, 
It's in Smallville. It's about a young Superman. Okay. Used to, used to Jazz watch, favorite program. It's my comfort show. <laughs> it's not very good, but I kind of, it's one of those things where, you know, you watch when you're younger and you're really attached to the characters. And his yeah. dad reminds me of my dad. So okay. I'll watch it and I'll be like, yeah. But it's really funny when, whenever they're on the farm and he has to, they're like moving bales of hay and it's him and his dad. Obviously his dad's human. He's Superman. Mm. I find it, it was so funny how in every single every single time they pay attention to when he lifts it, he picks it up. When his dad lifts it, it's like the heaviest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I always thought that was a really funny touch that they would do. Yeah, <laughs> but that must be part of that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Well, Superman. There's another one in Superman and Lois. Clearly, Superman fans here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> where um, Superman, a member of a uh, civilian, goes to push him, and he just holds his body. And he there. just stands still. And he yeah. just stands still. I was, that, that's a moment that came to my head earlier when I'm talking about art. Oh, Movement. Like how, how someone must be like paying attention. Because I always thought, how they've done that then? Yeah. But maybe it's just a bit of magic yeah. there as well. And, but. and sometimes with movements. So, um, for example, with when I worked with Ava Green on Dumbo, Tim wanted her to be really elegant. And so what I thought of was, well, okay, so in that period, people who worked in the circus, they probably would have done ballet. And I thought if we do some ballet, because there were circus people that were obviously coaching her uh, to do the, the kind of the flying. Um, and so we, we did ballet because if you can make an actor think of something else and then and, and then it will just kind of become part of their physicality, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't we didn't see her do any ballet obviously in Dumbo mm. but it just uh, it just allowed her when she stood on the platform to take off just to she'd been practicing pour de bras so her arms were softer yeah. and more elegant so that's also a movement person's job mm. is to kind of work out what what can we do in the background that yeah. will inform the physicality of the character you have to know quite a lot then about what sort of the cultural norms maybe around Absolutely. that period as well yeah. is there a lot of research you do then before yes yeah is a lot of your role research uh, yeah quite a bit yeah yeah, yeah so before yeah. a film so if we take chai and chocolate factory which obviously is a big i, I really like that film yeah uh, <laughs> what sort of research we're we talking about so you worked with i can't remember the actor's name again as i said uh Johnny the, Depp? the no the umpa lumpers oh deep roy deep roy that's it yeah so that must be quite a weird one because there's only one guy but you're choreographing I don't know how you were hundreds, it seems. Absolutely. Like. Interestingly, <laughs> of course, you've you've mentioned one film where I probably didn't do any research. Okay, um, sorry. <laughs> apart from no, no, not at all. But this is what this is great though, isn't yeah. it? Because that's the thing, every single job is different. Yeah. Um because when I met uh, Tim for yeah. he didn't have the music. He wasn't sure what uh, those numbers were gonna be like. Okay. So apart from, you know, reading the book, um, there wasn't really very much I could do because I knew it was going to be a long rehearsal process mm. um, I, that, I mean that was amazing because I'd never worked with visual effects before Yeah. so oh, right <laughs> so there were two techniques there was motion capture mm. which everybody knows in the black suits and the white yeah. Um but Tim said if, he, if the Oompa Loompa Lumpers were going to be more than a quarter of the screen it would look digital so he wanted it to be real. So they brought in this, the biggest camera I've ever seen, and it was motion control. Okay. So you put deep as Oompa Loompa number one on the end of the line, Augustus Gloop. Yeah, Augustus yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, so they capture that, and then we move deep to the next position, Augustus Gloop, Augustus Gloop, <laughs> and we did that. Some, t some days we got 1.2 seconds. Wow, yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just I know. thinking how long that must have taken. So, cause in yeah, that, months, I mean, months. Months of yeah. just... Months, yes. Augustus Gloop. Yes. <laughs> and that thing. was just... <laughs> was he quite happy to do that as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, you got to know the words. He used to get really fed up because he used to get really tired. I mean, that, you know, yeah. it took a lot of... And he wasn't, he hadn't, you know, he hadn't been, he wasn't trained. So okay. it was tough. It was, it was physically very, very tough for him. And then yeah. by the time we got to Mike TV... Uh, and again, that that thing about Tim trusting what you do. Mm. He gave me the music. I took it back to the rehearsal room and I played it. And I was like staring at the machine, going, "Oh no, this isn't a dance. This is oh my, what is this? Yeah, yeah. What is this?" <laughs> and so I just played it. By that time, by that stage, there were three of us. So mm. there was somebody uh, on his lip sync. Oh no, just two of us. That's right. And so I said to Jane, I said, "Oh." I said, okay, 
if you're going to get a message out to the world, to the children, about this, you'd start with a newsreader. So what we did was we set up in the in the rehearsal room. Mm. It was mad. We had a <laughs> newsreader, and then there was got to be adverts if it's TV. All Tim said to me was, "I want umpa lumpers inside the television and outside the television." That was it. That was all the brief I got. <laughs> so, um, but again, he wouldn't have left me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, just, yeah, 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 it was yeah. more like just go and see what you can do. Yeah. Um, and so we set up. And I came home. So. Mitch, my lad, was six going on seven. Mm. So I got all his toys out of the cupboard. I took them in the next day and we set up, so we set up some commercials uh, and we set up a chef. Literally, we just used whatever we had in the room. And I said, There's, it's got to be a rock band. It's got to be, it has to be a rock band. So we pretended, me and Jane, to be a rock band. Um, and we brought Tim out. He must have thought we were nuts. Yeah. And we ran around this rehearsal room going from the right. The fridge was the chef. Uh, and he just, he, he was brilliant because he just went, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And went away. And I drove in to Pine, Pine, Pinewood the next morning. And the producer phoned me on the way. And she said, oh, you're nearly here, you're nearly here. I said, yeah. She said, oh, because it's all changed, it's all changed. I said, oh, oh, okay, oh. Never mind. We, yeah, tried. Yeah. we tried. We tried. Got the script. It was all in. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. It was all in. Nice. And that was the most amazing feeling. The most. Yeah. So going back to that thing about writers, mm. that I I hadn't met the writer then, but that was obviously fed through to him. And he was just like. And they were open. He was open. Mm. Tim was open. Uh, yeah. Amazing. So you've essentially done. Yeah. To me, that's like a director's role you've done there. Director, writer. Chore- um, you know, you've done a fair bit more than what you, I would assume would be choreography. Yeah, in a way, yes. But I think, I think because I was, I'd been on it for such a long time already. You kind of become part. I'm not going to yeah. say family, but you do become part of the team in quite a big way. The and roles they get more blurred. Trust you. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think if that that was the fourth number, I think if that had been the first number, I probably wouldn't have been as confident okay. yeah, you know yeah. what I mean it's just yeah. uh, it seemed to happen quite naturally mm. yeah <laughs> Julia Roberts says something about that on um, Graham Norton the other night she said something about I can't remember what film it was for I should know what film it was for but on the day they would have to take breaks because the script wasn't finished for um, whatever reason yeah. and yeah. they'd be writing scenes on the day and they'd all just chip in to do this and it's oh, quite really? a famous film I can't remember what film it's the film that she got famous from oh well she's a prostitute maybe Richard Gere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty woman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but the, the shoot schedule, they didn't change. So they literally just didn't have the full script. Okay. And uh, yeah, she'd mentioned that kind of collaboration and she was like, it all got a bit weird. Um, right. Everybody was kind of just saying, should we do this? And they'd be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know. It's very funny to me then. So like directors, maybe more starting their journeys are very like, this is exactly how I want to be done. Yeah. Do not change what I want to happen. Yeah. But in some of now the biggest, two of the biggest films... Yeah. of late it's been not off the cuff but very dynamic on set people are quite happy to chip in change it obviously you have to know what you're doing you're not going to walk into your first set and go yeah I've got an idea and, it's, and then everyone's going to go yeah brilliant mm-hmm. you've got yeah. to earn that place as well absolutely and also yeah. I would never do that on set you know okay. this, this was in a rehearsal room this was in prep this we oh, haven't okay. even started shooting anything I'm with so you. this really was almost like development I guess yeah you, you know you could say. And again, it was kind of quite a private thing. It was just mm. me, Deep, Jane and Tim in a room coming up with ideas. But you must be pretty proud of that one. I'm very proud, yeah. very proud of that <laughs> and one. And actually, I yeah. don't tell people that. Because I, I didn't know that one. No, and I suppose no. I'm a bit conscious about that. But um, yeah, I definitely did not direct it. But you have directed things in the past. I have. Which I'm going to bring on to... Uh, yeah. A couple of short films. So we've, yeah. we've got one that I was... I want to say I was part of, I was yes, there. Yes, you were. I was in the yeah. background of. My was brother's you, part of it. He's a big part of it. He's, he's yeah. Uh, he's Joe for George. Was Joe good in uh, your he short film? He was brilliant. I was brilliant, yeah. <laughs> he was I think absolutely I, brilliant. I, I, I walk in the background for about a second and a half. Yeah. Yeah, but that second and a half made, nice. made it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You'll have to, yeah, you'll have to have a look at the whole thing. Yeah. 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 I don't think I've ever seen the whole thing. Oh, I'll send, do you I don't send think, it to you. If you could. Yeah, years back when I wanted to make fun of my brother for it. Of course. Yeah. And we didn't have it, so I could I couldn't do it. So I don't think I've ever seen my part in it. I was just seeing bits of it that Dan's in because he's always showing me that, and he. But you, we see you going up, going okay. up to yeah. Yeah, uh, I remember the I remember the song. I'm not going to sing it, but I remember <laughs> the song playing, and I'm I'm walking in there. Yeah, that's um, right. I, anyway. could, I could see you acting. 
I think. Maybe. <laughs> no one never say never. She's um, got a strong personality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that actually makes it makes sense to me now that you've gone from uh, choreography, movement direction to directing your own and writing your own short film. It's actually much closer to what I've. The two roles are actually much closer than what I thought they were. Is yeah, that why yeah. it was quite a natural movement for you to want to do that? I think so. I mean, I think what stops me directing more is that actually there's so much I don't know. You know, yeah. directing is so technical mm. as well, isn't it? I'm fine. I can direct the actors. That, mm. that I'm really happy doing that. I don't know enough. And I know how much I need uh, to know to be a choreographer. Yeah. So I have the deepest respect for other people and mm. their... And their particular roles. craft, yeah, and I don't know enough to do that. But you gave it a go. I gave it a go. How, yeah, because I wanted that? to tell it, see if I could tell a story. Okay. Yeah. And obviously that story, um, with Gnomeland. Yeah. And Not for Gnomeland George. And for George, yeah. So for George is based around a family, mm. and uh, the backdrop is a funeral, because I come from a very big Catholic family. I'm not religious at all now, but growing up, and. There's always been loads of funerals. Yeah. And um, I've worked with uh, this director called Claire Kilner, and we were chatting around the table one day, and I, I was moaning about some film that I won't mention <laughs> that I was a little disappointed in when I saw it. Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Um, and so she was going, well, you know, if you think you can do it, why don't you do it kind of thing. Nice. And I went, I'm not a director. And she said, well, no, but you could be. And mm. you write something and I went mm. oh no no that British thing of no no I couldn't yeah, do yeah. that and she's, she said just write about what you know and the thing is that was like a seed in my head it took a long time but it was definitely a seed and I started thinking about okay what in that do you know Alan Bleasdale you're probably too young to know I don't Alan think Bleasdale so, yeah. Alan Bleasdale's a Liverpool writer and he wrote Boys from the Black Stuff back in the oh, oh, 80s 90s anyway and it was it was very working class and a br utterly brilliant and I can't remember what the drama was, but there's this massive fight at a wedding. Huge. And I was thinking, oh, it'd be great to get all the generations together. Mm. But he's already done that at a wedding, so I won't do that. And I thought, what do I know? And I thought, oh, funerals. Yeah. I really <laughs> know about funerals and mm. families. And um, so I started writing it. And uh, Mitchell then was probably about four mm. and he would you know come home from school and go is is god real you know those kind of questions yeah yeah uh, and i took him to a christening at the church over the road it was our next door neighbors and it's um it's not catholic it's some sort of yeah you know christian church mm. and there was a crucifix on the wall and instead of the body of christ they had a twig it was just a twig and Mitchell's looking up at it, and in this really loud voice, he goes, Mum, Mum, look, Jesus, he's escaped. <laughs> and it was just so funny. And yeah. I thought, oh, my God, yeah. Okay, so he's going to... We still live in a pretty Christian world, don't we? Yeah. Uh, mm. Really. Uh, unless you send them to a, a, an all-faith church. And I did, we didn't want to do that. We wanted them, the kids to have no religion at all. Mm. But then, of course, if they have no religion... They don't always get all the answers. Not that there are answers, but, you know, all those mm. those questions. Anyway, so I thought, oh, God, that's fascinating. A, a kid in a very Catholic environment, how will that feel? How, how could that play out? So I thought, OK, it's a funeral. I can't make it about his granddad. That just felt too close to my dad. So mm. I thought I'd make him about a great uncle. It's a great uncle. It's a funeral. And at the funerals that I went to everyone would congregate in the kitchen. Yeah. And there was this, my cousin's husband and my older brother, actually, they always held court. Mm. So you always had the lads, the young lads with beer. There was always loads of beer and food at our funerals. They're pretty good, actually. Yeah. Um, and they would always hold court and be laughing. And uh, the women would actually be in the kitchen. And it's not because they, they were in sexist households. It was just what used to happen yeah anyway yeah. um so i sort of thought that but i couldn't work out what the great uncle did and i'm on a tube in hammersmith and this older guy 
jumps onto the tube and he looks a little bit like Fred Astaire mm. and he moves like Fred Astaire. So he's chatting away, but he's kind of moving all the time. So I start talking to him yeah. and he's just come from a ballroom dancing session with his nice. friends. Yeah. And then he started talking about his wife. He mm. lost his wife and she was his dancing partner. And as he got off, I thought, oh, that's it. Mm. You want ju- you you want just one more dance with your wife? Yeah, yeah. So basically, we we all they all danced at the end in the film. Yeah. They all dance, and the little boy sees his uncle dance with her, his auntie that we've seen in a photograph earlier on. Yeah, and then everybody dances at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, we've been having this conversation recently about writing what you know, and I've been trying yeah. to. You know, when you're younger, especially like I was like, I want to make whatever I want to make. You know, I watched I watched Star Wars, I want to make Star Wars, or yeah. what, you know, that kind of thing. And I kind of learned over time. Like, you know, and I think you have that thing of thinking you don't if, you know, when someone tells you write what you know, you kind of I think maybe that maybe it is an English thing of going, well, I don't, don't I, know, I don't know anything interesting. Like, yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And we've been talking about this. And I think, Joe, you're very much against sort of there being rules. And, and I, I, I think you're in some ways right. I think there are a lot of rules. But yeah. I do think writing what you know. Um, could involve like anything from like emotions to um, situations and people, and and yeah. it can just be the kernel of an idea. Exactly, can't it? yeah. It can be yeah. what what gets you sitting down at your laptop and and exactly. typing away. Yeah, what you end up with can it, be anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was, yeah, I was thinking because I've been trying to sort of we, we, we've been talking about it, but I feel like you really disagree with me. <laughs> yeah, well, I just think um, <laughs> there's like rules for the sake of rules, and that sounds yeah. like one I hear. So yeah. when like Jad says to me, uh, you want to make a film based in another country which you're not from mm. you why would you do that there has to be a really really strong reason as to why uh, and and or a lot of research a lot of research yeah but i, I i've been that is, oh, sorry you you continue I'll, I'll, no no <laughs> not at all no what i was thinking is yeah. that but in a way that could just be a location yeah and, right? when, and that's and that's where i when then jed said it to me i was just thinking yeah. like why because obviously i've not been educated yeah. on it it's not a problem to me so if you know yeah. as long as it's not making fun of another culture or anything yeah. like that mm. and it's accurate i don't mind like i don't see that as a problem to I be think, based somewhere i don't see it as a problem yeah. that you don't know it as long as it's not like you know where incorrect yeah. or anything like that why not is that just a snobbery rule and that, well, uh, the advice i've always been given is more that if you write r- further away you go from what you know in terms of um environment or language or whatever you're just more likely to make mistakes rather if you base yeah. it on um, yeah I think, I think that's the advice i was given more i don't know yeah. does that yeah. make sense yeah yeah um You wrote and directed Nomeland after that one then? After Four I did. George. So after that, we thought, even though it's it's based, on, you know, for George is, is around a funeral, hopefully it's it's optimistic and funny yeah. and, and all that one stuff. One thing I've always said, I actually, because I was quite young, I don't know how young I would have been when you, when we, when did you film that one? Well, I think Dan was probably seven or eight. Yeah. So I'd have been about nine, nine or ten-ish, yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. I remember thinking it, because obviously I'm from a, Catholic, yes, big family, yeah. Irish Catholic family, and I really felt like it was actually like a funeral I'd been to. Mm. It was a really weird experience because I remember not really knowing what was going on. Mm. It was at a church. Every time I've been to church before was for funerals or christenings, and it genuinely felt like that. And I remember that being really, really confusing to me. And I don't really know what was going on. Okay. So after For George, you then wrote and directed N- Gnomeland. Yes. So um, there were a few people that had helped me, you know, quite, obviously quite a few people that had helped me. And we just really enjoyed working together. Mm. So we thought, oh, should we just have another go? Mm. We thought we should do something completely different. Mm. Um, and a friend of mine had told me this story about how he he lived in London and his best mate. Um, and he he and his partner decided to move to Devon for a kind of better quality of life. Mm. So he moves down to Devon and they've got a baby and she's a teacher. So she was out teaching and his best mate from London comes down to see him to see what this better life is all about. And it's pouring with rain. They're sitting in this little, little house or little flat, whatever it was, the baby's crying and they don't know what to do. Mm. And a leaflet had come through the door about this place called, it was actually called Gnome World. So they decide to go take the baby to Gnome World. And 
as they enter, they're forced to wear a red hat. And it's just a little bit shit, really. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, not, it's yeah. not great. So he's telling me this story, and I just that's just really funny. I said, God, that would make a great short film. Yeah. So basically, I <laughs> nicked that story, nicked that idea, and just sort of developed it. And you didn't make one after that? No, I didn't make one after that. They're, I mean, I would like to, but... Well, you know, they're so hard. Yeah, it's I don't so think hard. I'd do it again. <laughs> and I think, you know, oh God, I've pulled in favours left, right and centre for mm. both those two films. Yeah. And uh, we would we had two campaigns to raise money for both of them. Yeah. And that was the other thing. I, I can't do this again. I yeah. can't. I'm not, you know, all, all my mates, they're not loaded. They're not wealthy. Mm, yeah, yeah. I can't ask. I can't ask. Um, and then I can't remember what film I was on, but something then took over and I mm. thought no it's okay maybe in the future maybe yeah. that thing of you know it's not the end yeah yeah. yeah yeah um and so now what I've been concentrating on is I've been writing <laughs> writing um a series an idea for a series based on my early life in 1981 as a dancer oh, yeah nice. and I don't want to say too much because I don't want to jinx it but we do have a production company that's helping me develop it okay yeah. Yeah, nothing signed. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you know how Very these nice. things are. But, how how uh, does that work? So I'm just looking at a writer to my left. So you've got an idea. <laughs> yes. Um, so you, you wrote this series. Did you have, did, had you already spoken to a production company before no. you'd written it? No, so what happened most, was I, I yeah. started writing it and it's my own sort of uh, confidence or lack of confidence that actually made me write all of it. Mm. And I thought just, just that thing of just write, just yeah. write and write and write. Um, and so I did and then COVID happened mm. And so I wrote more and I just kept writing it. And every time I started an episode, I, I think, no, I can't write anything. And then yeah. I would just start. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, I did have certain things because it's about eight women. Mm. Maybe I shouldn't say too much. But um, basically, I have kind of lots of recordings of us talking, lots of stuff written down, going back because it's, it's going back a long time. Mm. And I wrote it in notepads before Mitchell was born. So yeah. I started writing it 30 years Long ago. Long time ago, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. put it in a drawer. And so I've just got it out again. Yeah. In the last sort of couple of years. But we will, we need to get a, a proper writer, you know, someone to write with me or write it. Mm. You know, you could, they can take the idea and then well, to my right, <laughs> yeah. enter stage right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So how yeah. did you get the production company involved? So what happened was, through a friend of mine, she sent it to a producer who really liked it but said this is actually too big in mm. fact two producers have said this to me this is too big it's period it needs a lot of music mm. and it's part of it set abroad but and also she said i think fran should write with uh, work with a script editor so she suggested a script editor and i've been working with her so that we got the treatment and the first episode in as good a place as we could mm. and then it was somebody i was working with who uh, I was just chatting to him and he said, you know what? He said, I think I might know someone. It's, how, yeah, it's yeah. terrible. You don't want to say that that's how it works. <laughs> but it's how it But it that's is. how it worked. It and he passed it on and he really liked it and he invited me in to have a chat. So we had a chat. I really like him. Uh, and yeah, well, yes. let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, very exciting. I mean, you say you don't want to say that's how it works, but bear in mind there's decades of outstanding work that contributed to you being able to say oh i've got a friend yeah, who knows somebody it's yeah. not like that's true yeah. it wasn't yeah. just luck no you know and, and yeah. luck comes into it but yeah. it probably plays plays the one percent there in that scenario compared to the 99 percent, which i think people f hope it will be yeah, 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 yeah. and that luck. thing about you know stay brave mm. be yeah. brave keep talking about it don't yeah don't, yeah this yeah. is what I say to Jad. Well, if you have yeah. any small pre-production roles <laughs> <laughs> going, I will do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We've been speaking recently, me and Jad, around um, how you sell yourself yeah. in these moments. So since yeah. not, like that, not like that, not like not like <laughs> what you're thinking. No. Uh, like when we talk about obviously with our company, it's like I've been quite. No, we need to we need to sort of market it and sell it and be brave yeah. talking about it. Yes. Uh, because oh, yeah. I found that by doing that, people are quite nice. Mm. People help us out, like you helped yeah, us out today. Yeah, 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 yeah. People are yeah. always giving us advice. Whereas yeah. if you keep it quite quiet, that's right. You don't know to say anything. And sometimes yeah. someone might take the mick out of you and go, "Oh, these guys are just trying something." But yeah. the pros outweigh the cons massively. Definitely, to me. because even though we know it's a tough industry, but yeah. actually 
people are really generous. Mm. You know, mm. going back to the short films, the generosity of people. Yeah. Um, you know, even if they're working during the week and they'll come and help you at a weekend. Yeah, yeah. They, they, I think, I think people really enjoy other people trying to get on. I, yeah, I yeah, definitely. Well, they must see themselves yeah. in it. You go, well, yes. Because they've yeah. almost, I know, there'll be some people who obviously just rose through it, I'm sure, but 99.9% of people must have done the grind, yeah. done the yeah. grafting bit where it was just, yeah, it's hard. You know, because it's hard. I think it's hard even when you're at the top. Um, but there's some people who sell themselves too much, and yes. they maybe oversell it, and mm. they maybe, I don't want to say lie, but lie um, know, or exaggerate. I know, I know, I know you know who we're talking about. about. <laughs> um, and I think that's your fear. That's Jad's fear of looking like is looking like you're too confident, cocky, and, yeah. and no, I, I get that though. Mm, I really yeah. get that, and I think it's really tricky with social media, isn't it? Because yeah, I mean. Fortunately, I'm not allowed to say anything. I like okay. the fact that I have to yeah, sign yeah, NDAs yeah. because mm. I don't want to get on social media yeah. and say, you know, it, it worries me. People sitting at home on their own, not being able to get work, and how yeah. that, you know, how that makes them feel. That's one big thing with me. But also, it's like, oh God, no! I just, yeah. I just want to get up, I want to mm. go to work, do the job, and come home. Yeah, yeah, no, and definitely. Because it is all about the work. Mm. But you can't afford necessarily to do that because social media has become such a big tool, hasn't it? We, we use it quite a lot for our marketing, I think. And we're so sort of, far, yeah. We're trying to figure out how to kind of market ourselves still a little bit. Because I think yeah. we, we suggested earlier on, I was saying you should, you should play a role in the, when we're doing this podcast of like the person who's never watched a film. <laughs> like, <Yeah. ever. laughs> and a then, complete idiot, yeah. You know, like, I think we do play up to it a little bit. I think we play up to, you know, you're, you, you probably come... Because obviously I do know you know more yeah. about films than you'll say and i'll probably be a bit more pretentious than i am in real life because i think yeah. that works for us i i yeah the stuff i've listened to i think it works brilliantly thank you um, yeah. but we're still yeah social media marketing is really difficult and i think i'm also a bit more i get like anxious about you're very much more let's just do it i'm like no no that'll come across badly that'll be bad yeah and i'm a bit more um yeah i think it's because as well especially i've watched so many people and cause i guess i've been around it more i kind of i've watched what personalities really work in film and it's really difficult i think it's really like there's just like a level of it's, just, it's like a mix between confidence but really not delving into like cockiness because or arrogance because that's yeah. so i find it i, I find that really off yeah like, but i yeah. think self-awareness keeps you away from that like i yeah. mean the biggest difference i can see in those people and the guy we're talking about um is like a lack of self-awareness like he's yeah. selling <laughs> he he it, what he's saying essentially is complete lies which everyone knows is lies and he's still going it's like very, and that's embarrassing. It feels very yeah. old Hollywood yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, you describe it as Hollywood style. Yeah. yeah, which is yeah, but you're not going to do that if you started saying, "Oh, I'm a writer and I want to write." No, you're not going to do. You're that. not going to come across that, like that. I just not. met you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's quite a big, a big step between that yeah. and what you think the next step yeah, is. I worry so. about it. I worry. Yeah. I want us to come across well. It's but, a judge's um, journey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> One recent achievement you've had. Um, I wasn't there for it, but I was there a year after. Was it? Uh, Lipper oh, in Liverpool. Oh, my word. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was honestly such an amazing day. Yeah. So unexpected. Um, basically, I got, I got a sort of award from... that was. It's an example by. of uh, downplaying what we were speaking, speaking oh. about recently, by the way, <laughs> just in case you're wondering. Yeah. Uh, yeah, by Paul McCartney. Oh, wow. And he was just, oh, he was just ace. Really? He, yeah, mm. absolutely. I mean, yeah. It's Paul McCartney and he's standing in front yeah. of you. It's uh, and he's like, all right, Fran. Uh, <laughs> just honestly, so normal. Yeah, yeah. So, so normal. Um, yeah, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. And I've yeah, never yeah. been in that kind of academic mm. atmosphere. Um, well, I did go to our, our oldest son's graduation, but mm. uh, they put a gown on me and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And I had to do a speech, which was absolutely terrifying. Mm. But they were all so lovely. And I it was watching him, ab absolutely fascinating. Yeah, yeah. He, because there were two years of students because of COVID. So there were right. a lot of students receiving mm. their certificates. And he had a moment with each of them. That's nice. Yeah. And I thought that's you. And he does that every year. He never yeah. misses it. And he's just, yeah, he was just a top bloke. Yeah. It really was in the moment. It was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Because I was yeah. there a year later, so Dan graduated from Lipper the year after. That's right. After course, you were there, yeah. if the stars aligned, that would have been unreal, I, wouldn't it? It would have been. Um, it would have been. But yeah. no, same thing again. He he shook a hand, took a photo, spoke, and he seemed to have a comment for every single yes. student, which I thought was yes. 
and this is not a young man. No. You know, and you can, and, no. but he bounces around. He got up. He jumped up. He spoke. He's there for hours. Yeah. I was, pretty. Yeah. Yeah. It's very impressive. Very kind of him. He's cool. Yes. So really cool. yeah. he, he, he does seem cool. I don't, I don't know him like Fran knows and they're best mates. Obviously, <laughs> I know him really well. Yeah. Really, really well. Yeah. 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 I've, got, I've got a question, actually. From knowing Joe roughly, what department on set do you think he would fit into the best? I would first AD. Yeah. That's a Morris you job, like You like order. Yeah. 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 I can see the organisational <laughs> yeah. side yeah. of things. Yeah. yeah. And but, he's got a, a sort of slight toughness that you need. Yeah. To <laughs> yeah. To I say slight. Slight, yeah. Slight, yeah. Not yeah. much. Really, yeah. first AD is make or break. Yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah, I thought more Lee's than the Hollywood blockbuster. Oh, well, well apart from <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> oh, you, that side of the no. camera. Oh, yeah. yeah, sure. No, we always give you, we always say Joe's a bit of a Mark Wahlberg type, which is, I don't know, I don't know if that's a compliment <laughs> or not. <laughs> oh, he is, though, so, yeah. yeah. You're a bit yeah. of a Marky Mark. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Marky Mark, yeah, brilliant. Um, finally then, Fran, thank yes. you so much for today as well. Oh, it's um, been great. Thank you for. Yeah, we appreciate yeah, it. Is there any final advice you could give somebody who maybe wants to follow in your in your footsteps? I think maybe, like I said very early on uh, when we were chatting, um, I would say for a choreographer or a movement director, learn as much as you can. Mm. Have your, you know, you need to know lots and lots of different styles. Um, yeah, learn as much as you can, and do whatever you can you know teach do fringe work do just keep moving just keep, keep moving, moving. Yeah. yeah yeah brilliant thank you very much Fran like pleasure that. yeah pleasure. It's, very, it's very fitting as well for a movement director to be the advice to be keep moving I like that. <laughs> yeah I, I really like that I think it works really nicely